Hello there guys and gals, the Welsh Hunter here back with yet another 100% achievement and trophy guide and this time we are getting it all in the Creepy Syndrome. Yes, happy Halloween, a few days late or so, but bleh, coming up Christmas near. Yeah. Uh, this game was developed by Boomfire Games, published by Jandu Soft and is usually available for a beautifully small £4.19 slash $4.99. So this was an enjoyable game as we play as Random Unknown who speaks to a psychiatrist who puts us through four different like mini game levels to see how mad and nuts we are. And if you're following me, which over 20,000 of you are, you all must be mad <laughs> in the good way, of course. <laughs> but each level is different from the art style to you get point and click uh, to retro style levels. It is actually quite the excellent little game. Now as for achievements and trophies, you basically get them all for completing every ending. So each level uh, effectively has a good and a bad ending, so we do actually need to replay these short levels a few times. There are also three achievements for getting, stick with me here, more good than bad endings, more bad than good endings, and half good, half bad. So we'll be doing this in a particular way. It's all easy enough though with a few jump scares to keep you on your bones. All in all, you're looking at around one and a half hours to get this done, so with that being said then, <laughs> let's do it. And this guy looks like he's just about to get an alien pumping out of his chest. That's some weird breathing, bruh. So anyway, what we'll do is go to choose session and then we're gonna start the first one, which is a watchful gaze. So what we are going to do then, we're basically gonna be getting the, uh, do these first two levels with the bad ending and then the uh, third and fourth level with the good ending. Uh, in order to just get everything down the middle, job done. Right, so this first one, you will press the left stick to just continuously move up. There's a little bit of puzzlings that is, gonna, uh, that is going to be happening here. So just keep walking up for now. Um, again, a little bit of dialogue. We can just smash that through that with the A button. When you come up to certain things, um, you'll need to use the right stick in order to use the uh, mouse or the key, or which is actually an eyeball. Um, and we'll be we'll have to do a couple of puzzles, and uh, yeah. So it's all still very easy, but it's all creepy. Boo! Uh, a pedum. Anyway, no time to change. Right. So again, use the right stick to move the cursor I, and then what you'll need to do is obviously press the A button then to pick up the piece of paper here. Um, it's just a bit of story, just telling you what's happened. Um, some kid died, which is not. Uh, not fantastic. In fact, that's really not fantastic. That's really terrible. Uh, so we're going to be coming up to the first puzzle box soon, and here it is then. So you press the A button. Press the A button in the middle uh, after you move your eye cursor over it. Then you need to put these in a particular order. So it's going to be heart. Then the second one is going to be cross. And then the last one is going to be scale. And it's the same every time. It's not a random puzzle. So heart cross scale, and that will open up the lock box. Then you can just pick it open, and there we go. Ah, he's a good kid. Ugh, technically not anymore, but ugh, it's awkward. Anyway, so just continue walking forward, and then eventually we're going to get to a jigsaw puzzle, which again is going to be very easy enough. All you got to do is just move the pieces around in order to get the picture, uh, to form the picture, make it, you know, blamissimo, eh? Yes, my Italian needs some work. So here it is then. So basically what you're going to be doing, it's basically like three people holding hands. Um, now you see the greyed out pieces. Once you've put a pl one piece, in the correct place, it will grey out, which means that it's correct, and you won't need to worry about that piece anymore. So just keep uh, moving things around until this puzzle is complete. Again, no time limit, so ticketh your timeth. This drawing looks like it. Our dad. <laughs> this drawing was looked like it was made from a child. Now that's 
pretty much how I draw. A 33-year-old draws like a child. I can only do stick men, and that's it. And everything else I suck at. Uh, so again, just keep continuing to pick up items until we get to the next puzzle. It's going to be like a, a puzzle with five little pegs that we've got to do in a particular order. So again, continue to move forward. Clozapine? I remember. Why did... I haven't seen... I don't even... So this be the peg puzzle that's coming up, and again, it's the, sa uh, it's the same every time. It's absolutely the same every time. So choose the second one from the left, and then the peg on the very right, and that'll go padink a dink, and job done. So grab the item inside, and then again, continue to go forward. Now, in just a bit, you're going to be in like a sort of dreamland, um, where a monster thing is going to attack you, where you can either attack him or not. Depends how brave you are. Me? I crap my pants at every opportunity. Shouldn't have said that. I am so... Maybe I should... When I was away, I don't actually crap my pants at every opportunity. Of course, <laughs> that'd be uh, that'd give me a big problem. Uh, so here is the uh, part. Then, so effectively, you can either press attack or just do nothing. For this run, for the bad ending, we are going to attack him. That's going to lose us one piece of health right in the top left corner. Which is fine, just fine. Um, we need to do that anyway, so we're all good. So again, we're just going to continue on forward, and then it's going to be like a, a mini game with a bit of timing in it. So it's basically an easy one. It's a bar, and there's a bit of black in the middle, and we've just got to try and stop the cursor in the middle. Oh, Jesus Christ! It's uh, yeah, it's one of those uh, ghouls from Fallout. Have you ever seen a ghoul's wang before, smooth skin? Anyway, uh, yeah, so, um, again, even for this time in minigame, we're gonna, we're gonna miss it anyway, um, again, just because it's going to, we're gonna be going for the bad ending. Oh, and there it is. So, yeah, that's the time in minigame. Any time in minigame is exactly the same as that one, where you've basically obviously just gotta get the, um, bar in the middle, or the cursor in the middle, whatever you wanna call it, but you gotta stop it in the middle. So, we can miss that one. Uh, really doesn't matter. Uh, we can miss that, and then we could just continue on forward. Daddy. Daddy. You know what? Daddy has been ruined. Uh, if you know, you know why, but d Daddy's just been totally ruined. Unless you're into that kind of kink, of course. <laughs> no, I mean, God, please come back. I'm sorry about the day of that. I don't... Dad? Now I remember. I argued. I had. I was tr his f even so. I was under. I suffered from nothing. Seemed. I finally. It was all a product of my room. So for this little boss type thing then. All you're going to do is press the A button to shoot him a couple of times, but we're going to let the boss attack and kill us. This is for the bad ending. Um, to get the good ending later on. So again, here we go. So just keep shoot, you know, keep shooting at him. Now what would come up is this uh, time in mini game, uh, which basically if you get the bar in the middle, it will reload and then you can carry on shooting him. But we're just going to let him kill us off. That's going to get us our first achievement of the game and the badness of the ending. You are swallowed up by your amnesia. Very uh, hard-hitting achievement names in this one.
So this will happen after every uh, thing, after every level that we do. The psychiatrist here with the um, the hugger trying to burst out of his chest will always talk to us and have a weird, creepy little laugh. Then we can once again choose our session. So this time, once we choose session, we are then going to go to the second level, Lord of the Rogue. Now this one seems to be the sort of longest one, or there's a lot more to do in this one. Again, still quite short, but quite a lot to do in it. Also, by the way, there's no in-game save feature, so you uh, basically just have to finish the level. Or apparently if you're on Xbox and PlayStation, whatever you're on, just use Quick Resume. Probably be easier. Um, so, uh, there are enemies in this level, but you can't die. All you'll do is just respawn a couple of screens away. Um, so don't worry if the, uh, an enemy catches you, you don't get like punished or anything for it. So we are all good. So this is the Lord of the Rings spin-off, Lord of the Road. So we're going to head down and then we're going to head to the left. And then again, you're just going to continue on going left a couple of screens until you reach your beloved little old lady's cottage house without the old lady or cottage. So once we get to the house, we're actually going to go up a screen, so head up, and you can see this altar here, plus there is a fuse on the ground, so you don't actually have to inspect the altar, but we are going to pick up the fuse with the X button uh, to pick up, so that, yep, that makes sense, so we'll go down one screen, and then we will go all the way to the right until we get to the sort of main hub area where the other house is. So this is the main area, I'll just refer to, to this as the main area. So what we'll do is we'll continue on to the right. So we basically have to find a generator now. Again, it's none of this is random, it's all good. So you go to the right, we're going to start heading down and to the right. So go, if you go went straight down or directly to the right, uh, it would have been just been blocked off. So we need to head down right and then continue on to the right. And then in the next screen should be the generator. Right, so press the X button when you're next to the generator, that the fuse will automatically be put in. Make sure to press X to interact with it again, and you need to get the voltage to 160. Um, so have a play around, but for me, I put the first one down and the second one to the left, and that seemed to work. So once you've got it to 160, the generator's on. Then we're going to backtrack all the way to the main area again. And once we're here, uh, that's not a carrot in the wall, by the way, but we're going down one screen. And with the generator on, for some reason, there's a ladder coming up here now. This would have made things a lot easier for people who were, you know, diving in wells and such. So we're going to head downstairs. Again, no enemies down here or anything just yet, so do not worry. No jump scares or anything just yet. But now we're going to head all the way to the right until we're in a room with four chairs and a book. Yes, it's a, it's a sadistic thing, or something, or it's an OnlyFans special, who knows? Yeah, anyway, here we are. It's my OnlyFans special. It's just me, naked, while I pay everyone to look at my naked body. Uh, anyway, let's, no, that's not a thing, but uh, you read the book. You only have to read it once there by pressing the A button to inspect it. Head all the way back to the left, and you're going to get a little bit of a jump scare coming up now, so... Brace your pants. <laughs> yes, that's my face when somebody offers me the last donut or something of equal deliciousness. So we were now going to head upstairs. We're going to go 
right up two screens, basically back to where our car was. Now, this is where the enemies will start chasing you. Again, if you end up getting caught by any of these enemies, you'll just start in the well again. But if you pick up the key, which we need to do in the top right-hand corner, so once you pick up the key, what we need to do from here is go down one screen and then left, basically going back towards the old lady's house without the old lady. But like I said, if you end up getting caught by that monster there, you'll still have the key picked up, and then you'll just have to come up through the well, and then up another screen, and then come left. So, avoid all these half-eaten... I don't know, they look like weird ducks or something. And then quickly go to the door, press the X button on it once, and then press the X button on it again in order to enter. Now, uh, nothing too spooky in here, just a dead body with an, an incredible amount of mud. Uh, mud, mud. An incredible amount of blood just, you know, making its way upstairs. So we're going to head up the stairs. We're going to press X to go upstairs. Oh, sorry, I've been listening to a lot of Skin Dread lately. And if you haven't heard them, what a band. Go and check them out. Skin Dread, incredible. Anyway, here is the key right at the end of the um, blood entrail trail. So now we are going to head back outside. Now, don't worry, those half-eaten duck goblin monster things have disappeared, so no worries. But then from here, we're going to go outside and head all the way to the right into the main area again. Be aware though, by the main house there are still two duck goblin zombie things, so head immediately down, go straight into the house, again press the X button to open it, and the X button to enter. No enemies to worry about in here, but we're actually coming up to the end of it now, so what we need to do is head up the stairs, and in order to get the bad ending, in fact we're going to play, this is the only level that has two bad endings by the way, so what we're going to do, we're going to pick up the dagger, um, Martha, you look a bit unhelp... unhelp-ish. So pick up the dagger, go over to Martha, and then just press the X button in order to sacrifice her. Once that is done... Sorry, sorry, mate, you just... You know, it's a lot of blood you've lost, and you can't have mine, because I need it. Uh, so we're just going to head downstairs, and it's basically going to be the end of the first run-through that we're going to do. We're actually going to do this again and do things just a little bit different to get bad ending number two. <laughs> so, yes, 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 long, long, long way up. Um, yeah, Lord of the Road again. So, effectively, we're going to be doing a lot of the same stuff that we've done in the first playthrough. So, again, um, it'll be just a case of, from here, we're going to go down, all the way to the left, and then up to the altar in order to grab the fuse. Uh, now, obviously, with levels sort of being as short as this one, you know, if you play it again, then it's pretty much stuck in your brain, which is pretty nice. So, hopefully, you can get... Hopefully you can either follow along anyway without my voice too much, and hopefully it's a bit more familiar to you now. So again, we're just going to go ahead, we're going to grab the fuse, and then we're going to head all the way to the right and put it in the generator. You know how to stick it in a generator, huh? 
And of course, it'll be the exact same here then. So we're going to input the stuff into the generator, put the generator on a cheeky 160 valve. Uh, again, first one bottom, second one to the left. That seems to work every time. Head left. And then when we get to the main screen with the big house, go down and we can then exit down to the well. Welly, welly, welly. And if you've somehow forgotten, well, let me tell you. Head to the right, read the book, head to the left, look at me as if somebody was dangling a nice juicy steak wrap in front of us, uh, in front of me, uh, one of the jump scares, and then we will go and get the key from where we first started the level next to our car. Now, I do actually end up uh, getting caught by this half giraffe thing, whatever you want to call it. Uh, so, yeah, I just got completely mashed up straight away. Uh, like I said, the good thing is, though, once you have picked up the key, the key will remain with you, so you don't actually have to go back. So, you will start, as I said earlier, I'll start in the well, so we can then just head straight up the stairs. And then, instead of going up again, we can just continue on to the left this time. So, up one screen... And then we can head straight to the left because, again, the key would have been in our possession, so good job. So again, you need to go all the way to the left, avoiding these two dog, giraffe, whatever the hell that flappy thing is on the nose, zombie things. And head inside to the house by pressing X once and then X again. Oh, follow the yellow brick road, follow the red brick road, the road, the red blood road even. So follow the red blood, I'll try that again, follow the red blood road up, grab the key, and then again, we will just head outside and then uh, continue on. No, in fact, we're just going to head outside actually, so grab the key and head outside.
Only this time we're going to go up another screen to where the altar is because there is a new path that has appeared. <gasps> spooky! Except there's nothing spooky going on. It's a little bit of a cutscene. Looks like an enemy's going to get us, but he's actually a ghost who's dripping what looks like he's just crapping his pants all the way through. So it's unfortunate, but unfortunate for the ghost, but he will give us a little something something. He's basically going to give us a, a, an artifact of sorts. So pick up the artifact and then what we'll do is keep heading around and then down to the left. And we're going to get into a new screen where we basically have to interact with the book in the bottom left hand corner. And only then after you've interacted with the book, can you stand in front of the monolith and inspect it. And as long as you've got the dialogue, which says, I can now finally read it. I have seen the light. That's when you know you're onto a good one. The father walks the path. I mean, yeah, there's a lot of uh, a lot of fathers who walk a lot of paths every day to get to work, to go to the gym, to go to the shop and get a giant beloved pasty or something. Um, of course, I know it's all to do with all jeebusy stuff, but, uh, you know, my path is to follow the sign towards KFC. That's the path I chose, and that's what I'm sticking with. Right, so from here, we are going to, again, remember on the right-hand side screen in the main area, there's going to be another two floppy-nosed zombies in just a minute, so make sure to avoid them. But we're basically heading towards the right now to go back to the generator. So try and avoid these two the best you can, and uh, continue heading right and go back down to the generator. Yes, floppy nose ding-dongs will stop following you, so you're all good. But when you get here, you can see the path. Uh, there is a new path above us. So what we're going to do is just interact with this giant... I mean, it kind of looks just like a cup. So interact with it by pressing the X button again. And it's actually going to be a little, uh, little puzzle to do. So three buttons, exterior, middle, and interior. So first of all, we'll click exterior. And then we will click interior. And then we are going to click exterior, 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 exterior once more. And then middle to finish off this one is going to be a little bit of a click. And then what we can do from here, we can head left to go into the main area into the big house where we killed Martha the first time. This actually crapped me up to like every, all three times that I played this. That part right there crapped me up, or twice it did. I just didn't expect the noise. So, uh, yeah, looks like I'm a little you. So again, you're going to have to avoid floppy nose zombies. So uh, do your best with this one. Should be okay. For some reason, he's just losing his head, going straight for the trees up above. Uh, so now we can just go into the house. And now what we're going to do, we are going to actually sacrifice Martha. Sorry, Martha. Once again, we're going to sacrifice you. So obviously the only difference between the other bad ending and this one is that we released the ghosts first rather than we didn't last time. So... You can just pick up the dagger, go straight to Martha, give her the old sacrificial lamb of life, head downstairs, and you will get the next achievement for getting the madness ending.
<laughs> right yo mate so next up we're going to go for the third um level so we'll choose the next session and we're going to interact with the red button so make sure to choose the red button level now for these next two levels we're going to be getting the good endings and they're very similar in terms of Literally all you're going to be doing you, basically for both playthroughs you're going to be doing the same thing except for the very last Option where you choose the good option and the bad option So that's so you're literally playing the level twice the exact same apart from the ending Right, so this one It's not as long as you think but it's uh, kind of it's generally one of the slowest ones around So what you need to do then is into the top right corner. This plays obviously as a point-and-click adventure now so we're going to exit out, and then we're going to move the fingerer, move the ear finger pointer, all the way to the left-hand side in order to go outside. So, once we are here then, what we can do is, um, you can obviously see the three buttons at the bottom right there. So... If you need to interact with something or use it, you actually have to click the interact or use button first and then go for whatever one you want. So there you go. So choose the interact button and then you can interact with the paper and the, it's called a hook, but it's effectively just a crowbar. So, mm, mm. right. So we'll go back into the bunker and now we're going to go uh, back to the right. So put your finger uh, pointer all the way to the right in order to get back into the communication room. Next up, we are going to interact with the pencil in the pencil cup in order to collect, uh, yeah, a pencil. And then we're going to interact with the screwdriver on the left in order to pick that one up as well. Uh, if you go into your settings, I think you can choose the pointer speed to go a little bit quicker if you wish. So you can use um, the piece of paper and use that with the pencil. So when something is lit up, you can then use that with something. Um, and then you need to go ahead and press the use button. Press the X button in order to... Uh, so where the crowbar is lit up right now, if you press the X button, then it goes on to the next one. So once the note taking kit is available, then you can just go up to your phone, press the A button on it, and job done. Now, again, we're going to need to use that same note taking kit. So again, go down to use, click that one, press the X button to move it over to the note taking kit. And then interact with the computer. That's going to shut it down. Don't worry. Note spooky is going to be happening. Now, normally you think, oh my gosh, I'm the only one in here. And I'm about to get mashed up, boy. But it's actually not so bad uh, at all. There's no enemies in here. Thank God. So when we exit to the, uh, or exit out of the communication room, what we're going to do is use the hook slash crowbar on the middle grate. And that's going to get us a floppy disk. Now, kids today will never remember what a floppy disk is. In fact, if you if you say I've got a floppy disk, they'll probably laugh and think you mean something else. That's not what I mean. So now we can use, and uh, we are going to use the hook in order to get the valve in the top right hand corner as well. I've got a floppy disk. I've got a floppy disk. Yeah. They, they literally could have called it something else though, couldn't they? Next up, we're going to use the screwdriver and use that with the middle panel, the enclosed power system and this isn't going to be the same every time as well so you just need to press buttons two four and five and that will fix the power so once you interact with it again make sure to press buttons two four and five
And what into the communications room we go. So once again, we'll be able to use the note-taking kit on the computer, and this time it'll work. Oh, it is painfully slow, kind of painfully slow. Uh, but there we go. So go over to the control computer, and we are all good. Now we can use the floppy disk. So if you've got your floppy disk on you, just insert it straight in. Don't worry about uh, don't worry about hurting the computer. You won't hurt it. It's all good. It's floppy enough. Yeah, still talking about the floppy disk, of course. And anyway, the uh, machine room will open up. So we can exit the communication room and head into the door that's just open, which was the Mechanica room. Right, so we need to be grabbing a couple of things here. First of all, we're going to interact with the gas can or the fuel can, whatever you want. Um, so we'll interact with that in order to take it, interact with the fuel. Then we can interact with the fire extinguisher on the left-hand side and interact with the valve in the bottom right corner to grab that one. So in order to solve this teensy weensy uh, puzzle, what you need to do is use the valve on valve two. As you can see at the top, you've got valve one and three on the left and two and four on the right. So use the valve and use it with valve two and then use the next valve on valve four and that will set them both green. That's what we want, greeny snobs. Apart from the snobs. Then we can just go ahead and use the fuel can on the generator. That will get some fuel in the generator and get it powering up like a ting. Now we can observe the pressure controller, which is basically the big screen in the middle, and then you can click open bar one and open bar two. Sadly, it's not a free bar and it's not the bar that we're all thinking of, but they are bars to get us into the launch room. Kind of goes a little bit slow, this one, so uh, just open them both up and then we can head inside the launchy launch. Not lunch room, no, I'm afraid. Okay, so this is the last room then, so, you know, getting through it. So, we are going to observe the very left monitor, and we are going to select the very top option, which is the nuclear head. Man, give me some nuclear head. So, turn that on, and then we can exit, and then go to the next monitor. Yes, there will be a jump scare after every one, by the way. So with the second monitor, make sure to turn on fuel one. You need that extra bit of first fuel, so turn that on, jump scare again, and then go to the third monitor. Nice eyeless eyes, bro. So interacting with the third monitor will actually cause it to go on fire, or the computer on the right to go on fire. So then you'll quickly need to use the fire extinguisher on the fire. And then once you've done that and you've played Fireman and you don't get paid enough for it, uh, we're going to observe the third monitor to select Fuel 2. And then we're going to observe the fourth and final monitor on the right to select Activation. Now, after you've done that, this is where the good and the bad endings take place, literally with just the last decision of the level.
I thought that was Queen's uh, Bohemian Rhapsody in creepy form there, with, uh, after the third, <laughs> after the third monitor. Anyway, this is what we're going to do. We are going to open the glass. Oh, sorry, we're going to observe the central bit. We're going to pull the lever, but we're not going to press the launch button. Do not press the launch button yet. You see what it says, Salia del Bernquiel. Uh, we're going to choose this option. So at the very bottom, and then what's going to happen is that's going to give us the good ending for basically not blowing up the world. Your humanity surpassed your sadness. Madness, even. So it's all good. So that's the next good ending done. And then we've just got the Nocturne level left to go. Which is basically like a 2D side-scrolling thing. Here he is. Alien chest-busting guy who can't breathe properly. <laughs> so, obviously, we're going to choose Session. We're going to choose Nocturne. Now, this... This one isn't too bad. There's basically, when we, we basically have to go through the whole house, turn off the lights, uh, and when, or turn on the lights, and then we have to turn the lights off. There will be a monster that will randomly appear, um, but there are places to hide and stuff. But we'll come back to that in just a little bit anyway. So for now, after all this, literally all you're going to be doing is going through, as I said, the entirety of the house turning on every light switch. Um, they'll always have like a little icon. Uh, when you're next to a light switch as well. So that includes lamps, obviously the light switches, and anything else. So let's begin. So again, you can see where the, um, the little icon pops up whenever you buy a light switch. So turn on your lamp, turn on your... Uh, light switch, your main switch, and then just go through the door. Now these rooms basically are all familiar, they're all the same, so you literally just go to the right and then to the left, but just keep going until you turn on the lights. Um, there should be a light or two in every single room, so you ain't gonna miss out on much. Again, for this first part, while we're turning on all the lights, there's gonna be a couple of glass breaking noises, maybe a jump scare or two, but no one, nothing is actually gonna come after you, so don't worry about anyone chasing you for now. Uh, for this bit, when we get down here, make sure to go to the right slightly in order to go down to the basement. This one is very e can be very easily missed. So, um, but this is the only part where you can actually miss. Otherwise, you can just go straight back upstairs and then continuing on through each doorway, turning every light on that you can. So for this bit then, just keep walking forward. The lights are going to go out here, but just keep walking forward until the door closes. Again, he's not going to come after you here, but just keep walking forward a little bit and then go back and turn the light back on. Right, so if you've turned every light on, you should get the current objective to go to the bathroom and uh, recite your wish. So we need to go uh, to the uh, bathroom, which was to the right a couple of screens. And just interact with the mirror. And, and this is where the real fun's going to begin. Um, so after this, I wish mom was always with me. Wee. So let's start turning off the lights then. So go to the left couple of screens. We'll just start it from left to right. So we'll go to the very left hand side room first. Turn off the lights. Now, you'll know when the monster is coming, when in the middle of the screen is going to be like a little um, timed, you know, one of those sand time things. And it'll say someone is coming. And you basically got until the end of the, until the, the timer is filled up, to hide somewhere. Now, for some reason, there's only, 
there was only two places I could find to hide. Underneath this table here, which is in the kitchen, and then upstairs in what I assume is your mother's bedroom. So just keep on walking to the right again. Now, the second time through, I do it a lot quicker and I get, I think I get a bit luckier with that one because I was taking my time with this one. As you'll be able to see, I end up getting caught. So after I turn this light off, or in fact, actually, I'm going down to the basement first because I'm scared. Also, if if it says someone is coming back, you can actually hide behind those boxes in the basement as well, which I should have done the first time, um, but I didn't do that for some reason. So I actually try to head all the way back to the left of the table and it doesn't work for me. So if you are just underneath the stairs or you are around by the basement, remember you got the basement boxes to hide behind the desk in the kitchen or the table in the kitchen. Or if you think you've got enough time, head upstairs and then you can head through and hide underneath the bed. Uh, once you are hiding, you do have to do like a little bit of a mini game. We've got to get the bar in the middle as it goes from left to right. The ones we've seen a couple of times before. Um, but apart from that, it's all good. Uh, now, these uh, someone is coming sort of mini game things can happen at any point, really. So it can literally happen at any point because I'm about to get caught again. So again, I literally could have... Now, I try actually making it up to the bedroom this time, where again, I should have gone downstairs and gone into the basement. But as you see, anytime you respawn, you will just go into the bathroom. And what's annoying is I almost got to the bed as well. Yeah, stupid. Bloody alien thing. Hmm. Interesting. So yeah, so this is literally all you got to do. So from here then... Hopefully you don't get as caught as many times as I do, but you just need to head up and uh, just continue on towards your bedroom. Again, anytime someone is coming, the basement will probably be your best bet, or unless you think you are close enough to the kitchen table or the bed. Okay, that got bloody pretty annoying pretty quickly. Leave me alone!
So I was a bit useless with that one, but luckily it didn't get uh, the uh, the enemy skull thing didn't get totally full the way up. So we're all good. Um, I forgot to turn the light off here. That's why I've just come back out. Sorry about that one. So yeah, this one was a bit of a messy sort of first playthrough for me. The second time, I think as long as you're quite quick and not sort of stuttering as I was, you're pretty much able to just get away with it and continue onwards. So turn off all the lights, get into your bed. Now this again is where the, uh, we do have to do this little mini game again, but this is where the good ending is going to appear. We basically have to choose to jump out of the window in just a mo. So, again, for the good ending and the four psychiatric endings to be too bad, too good, too bad and too good, uh, we need to choose the option to jump out of the window. So once you've jumped out that, you will get the achievement for I ran so far away and didn't look back. And you will get the first of the three psychiatric endings for basically being square down in the middle. <laughs> right, so what we're going to do this time, we're going to do a watchful gaze, which is the first level, but we're going to do the good ending this time. So by doing this, we'll get the good ending achievement. The answer was in the back of your mind for a watchful gaze. And we'll get the second out of three psychiatric endings as well for getting more good than bad. So again, obviously to get the good ending, you basically have to have to kill the boss this time which if you can remember from the first time it's actually easy just need to be good at timing stuff so obviously uh, remember you can just keep walking forward until we get to the locked box with the story attached i decided Miller? Maybe I knew... So this is it then, and this is the first bit of puzzle in here. So again, remember to input the code. It's a code of heart, cross, and scale. So it should be the same every time for you as well. So heart, cross, and scale. So once you've done that, you can pick up the story and then move on. And then we will get to the next jigsaw puzzle. Where you've got to put all the pieces around. And once you put the puzzle in the correct place, it'll get grayed out and you can't move it. Daniel.
this draw Howard? What happened? A scalpel. Clozapine? I remember. Why did... I haven't seen... I don't even... So, not man blood. Same thing with the five-peg puzzle now. So... Uh, choose the second one, so the, the second peg there, and then the very right-hand side, the fifth peg, and then you crack on. So, once we crack on, uh, remember, if you can remember, where we were in the dream where that big face thing was coming towards us and we had the uh, option to attack, this time we are going to not attack. So, you basically just have to leave him come towards you. It does take a minute or two, um, but as long as you... Uh, as long as you make sure to not press the attack button, you are golden nuggets, my boy and girl. Maybe I should get some... Ugh. When I was awake. Now, this is the part I was on about, but does this kind of face remind you of someone that either you're not, you haven't really been on good terms with, or somebody who you think, oh my God, I gotta talk to this bra right here, and you really don't wanna talk to someone? And they keep getting closer and closer to your face in your personal space, making you think, oh, get away from me. The breath, the breath. But this is, yeah, this is literally someone coming to talk to you now. And you're just like, I don't want to talk. I just want to eat my KFC in peace. To us. I have to get out of here. What the? God, I've got to find. Daddy. Oh, daddy. Ruined. Totally ruined, as I said. Right, so we're going to be coming up to the timing mini game now. Try and get it in the black bar so you don't lose any health. It doesn't matter too much, though, if you did. Uh, lose a bit of health, like me just there. But now we will get to the end boss. And again, like I said, you'll keep spamming the A button to shoot him as quickly as you can. So the more you shoot, the more uh, you obviously knock him back. So you basically need to shoot him. Do that same sort of bar mini game that we just done. And as long as you get it in the middle, you will reload and then just keep shooting. You've got to do it kind of quickly. Um, obviously before the monster gets you beaten dead. No, I mean, God, please, I'm so upset. I don't. Dad? Now I remember. I argued with Dad. I had. I had an. I was traumatized. His face. Even so. I was undergoing treatment. I suffered from schizophrenia. Nothing seemed to work. I finally put an end to it. was all a product.
So this is it coming up then. So again, as soon as you see the boss, spam the A button to shoot. Do the timing bar quick as you can. Uh, you need to reload as quick as you can and then just keep doing this until the boss is dead. You'll have to do this around six or seven times. I managed to So, uh, so there you go. Sorry, it's the face in the mirror which is doing it. Huh? <laughs> eh? You're looking at me, punk. Uh, but yes, that's, that should be the second psychiatric ending and the good ending for A Watchful Gaze. Right, so next up, what we're going to do now, we need to do the red button with the bad ending and Nocturne with the bad ending. So um, literally, like I said, with those two, the levels play out exactly the same as they did previously, but it's just the last thing that you've got. It's the last decision, basically, that you've got to make basically the other option. So let's start off again with the red bouton. So after you've exited outside again, uh, remember to use the interact button in order to grab the hook and the piece of paper. So once you've grabbed those, you can go back in, go back to the communications room where we started and grab the pencil and the screwdriver. Then we're going to, of course, use the pencil with the paper in order to get a papery pencil. Um, yep, and then we can use the note-taking material. Yeah, and press the X button when you're on whatever you need. Use that with the phone and then use it with the computer. So what you say? Out we go, Mr. Mo. You want to stop calling me Mr. Mo? No. So we are going to use the crowbar slash hook on the grate to get the old floppy disk of life and use it to collect the valve in the top right hand corner. And then use the screwdriver with the enclosed panel. And then remember to press buttons 2, 4, and 5 to fix that boy. Fix that dear daughter, the boy.
So once we get into the machine room, we need to collect the fuel can, the fire extinguisher on the left, and then the next valve on the bottom right. So chuck those, uh, grab those three. Once you have grabbed all three, remember to put the two valves in valve two and valve four. Now you get really good at engineering stiffs and fixing stiffs. Put L fuel in L generator, and then of course interact with the screen in order to open up bar Unos and Tunos. So you should pro pretty much remember what to do from here then, you just need to go through all uh, four computer screens and interact with the only thing you'll be able to. So the first one's obviously the nuclear head, the second one's fuel one. After you interact with the third monitor, remember it's a fire which you need to fire extinguishery out. Galileo, Galileo! So, who wants to destroy the world? Trump almost did, um, but now we will do it. So this time, what we're going to do is interact with the switch, or the lever again. This time we are going to press the, press, <laughs> press the red launch button. Once you've launched that, this is going to be the bad ending of the red button. And then we've just got to do the bad ending of Nocturne, and a good ending of Lord of the Road to finish the game Totally.
So, pretty sure you should remember as well, old Nocturnius of McBurnius. So obviously, once it starts, just go through every room in order to turn the light on. Uh, remember, again, about the basement as well. So when you get downstairs, remember to take a little detour down to the right in order to turn the basement light on as well. Right, so this time then, I was a little bit quicker, and I was able to finish this level a lot quicker as well. So again, if you think that you've got time, head straight upstairs to the bed, or if not, again, remember to go downstairs to the basement and hide behind the boxes. Again, you can, you are able to do that. Um, again, I think it is random when he just shows up, or I don't know if I just took too long the first time. Um, but I'm not being funny, if you've got to turn off the lights, you would have put in a run button. Because I don't know if anyone else does that. You know when you turn the lights off before you go upstairs to bed? You end up crapping your pants, don't you? So you're just like, oh my god, there's somebody there! Run! Even though there's absolutely nobody there at all. So yeah, that's, that's exactly what I do. So I think it's going to start happening in just a bit. Yeah, so here we go. So this is me thinking I've got enough time. So if you manage to come upstairs and only now it's started, you should just have enough time in order to turn the two lights off and get under the bed and remember to do the slow down breathing mini game. Right, so, once we get to the bed, turn both of the lights off. And I think he's actually going to come up again. Ah, no, he's all good. So, we go to bed. This time we are going to choose to lie down in bed and finish the ritual. He's going to absolutely slice us and dice us apart, but we do get the bad ending. And we get the final psychiatrist ending for getting more bad endings than good. 
So all that's left to do, you should, if you have a look, you should only have one achievement left, and that's for getting the good ending in Lord of the Roads. <laughs> <laughs> right, so for the majority, we're just doing the same thing, especially at the beginning, we'll be doing the same thing as we were doing the first couple of times. So we'll go down once, go to the left, and go ahead and grab the fuse from said Altair. Now head all the way to the right in order to go to the generator. And again, we have to do it to 160. Uh, for some reason, I was just having an absolute mess around here. But remember, it's the first one is down, and the middle one to the left. I don't know what the hell I was trying to do uh, at this point. There we go. That'll do it. And again, you're going to be going all the way back to the main area with the house. And if you go down one screen, we can then head into the well. <laughs> Wellington.
Right, so after you've uh, potentially not even crapped them for the third time, go up, grab the key, and then we'll head down and go all the way to the left to enter the other house again. Try and avoid these uh, floppy-nosed zombie bros, old Squidward zombies, we'll call them. As you can see, that just about went well this time. Meh. So, up to the red brick road, grabbing the key as we go. No more squid with zombies. They can lick my boobies. It's Christmas time soon. So, when we're outside, we're going to go up once again. We're going to get that little cutscene with the ghost. He's going to give us uh, the an artifact. I was going to say antique, but it's the artifact. And then if you go to the left screen, remember to pick up the book and interact with the monolith until it says, I can read it now. The father walks the holy path of Greg's pastures or whatever Greg's is in America and beyond. Right, and again, we're going for the walk of life. I tell you what, us being a cop, we should have uh, picked up some donuts on the way for this bloody walk, I tell ya. Yeah. Anyway, heading back all the way to the right in order to go to the generator. Remember, there's going to be two Squidward Flappy Nose zombies in the main, in the main area with the house, so just be aware of that one. And let's go back up the path again in order to do the little puzzle which we done earlier. So we'll interact the artifact, shove that in. And then remember, the puzzle is going to be exterior first of all. So the old X of the teriors, and then we're going to go for some of that sweet, sweet interior. And then we're going to get some of that juicy, delicious exterior. And some more of that sweet, juicy, delicious exterior. And to top it off, the cherry on the cake, straight in the middle. Boosh! There it is. So, yep. Without the uh, annoyance, it was exterior, interior, exterior, exterior, middle. So, <laughs> dad, damn it, those ghosts again. Crap me up again, then. <laughs> I suppose it done its job then, the game, didn't it? So, we're going to go back to the house in the central main area. Use the key to enter, and then we're going to go upstairs. And we are going to talk to Martha, but we're not actually going to kill her this time. That's nice of us, isn't it?
So, yeah, what we'll do, we'll just go over to Martha and just inspect her first before picking up the dagger. So we'll just have a little inspect and going to be like, hmm, <laughs> lost consciousness. I'm not surprised with the amount of blood around. So once you've talked to her, we're going to pick up the dagger. Now we're going to take this dagger all the way back to the altar. So when we get out of this house, we're going all the way to the left-hand side of the screens once more. And then we're going to head up to the altar and we're going to press the X button to interact with it. Now this is where we are with the demon. So basically, we are going to have to start going down the screen. The demon's going to chase us and he's going to start shooting at us. You can tell when he starts to shoot at you because it's sort of, there's a little bit of a noise. So what you need to do is just move basically from side to side. So as soon as we begin here, just continue on down. Demon will appear. There he is. So he is going to chase us and he will start shooting. And... So he's going to, he's basically going to take about five or six steps and then he's going to shoot. So you just need to keep going from right to left until we get all the way to the bottom. Once we see the heart, quickly press the A button on it in order to hit it, and this will be the... So you've stabbed it, that'll be the ending, that'll be no more, we're all done. That should be 12 out of 12 achievements done, if you want to double check that. So, yep, everyone's happy. Hey, let's go get some donuts, boys! Yeah! Uh, yeah, been a long night, hmm, yeah. Yes, of course, it's been a long night, you just got chased by a demon, bro. Anyway, say goodbye to your alien hugging chest busting friend. We are out of here. So there we go. Thank you so, so much for watching, guys and gals. I really hope you enjoyed the game and that the guide helped as well. If it did, of course, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share with a friend as well. Uh, big shout out to all my Patreon supporters and YouTube members as well. Big, massive thank you. And for everyone who interacts with me on the daily too. And I shall see you in the next one, guys and gals. Big old snickerballs. Loves. <laughs>